In this video, we are going to deep dive into penile injection therapy. I'm joined by Melissa Hadley Barrett, who is the expert to go to for this. She is a sexologist, a nurse practitioner, and she has worked with literally thousands of men post prostatectomy to help them regain sexual function and to learn how to use all these different erection aids. So welcome, Melissa. Thanks. It's great to be here. Amazing. So what I'm going to do is ask you a series of questions that have been posed to me by my audience through a touchy subject. So these are men who are on their post prostatectomy or prostate cancer treatment general rehab journey. And I've asked them through surveys and emails to send me their questions for you. So are you ready to dive in? I am. Hopefully I can answer them all. <laughs> Exciting. Well, the first one to kick us off, and I thought this is great because this is going to, I think, really lead us into talking about well, what even is a penile injection. A gentleman has written in asking, do intracavernosal injections aid recovery of the nerves required for natural erections? That's a really interesting question because there is one research paper out and I can send you the links to these papers after if you like. Um, but there's one research paper out that suggests that using intracavernosal injections or ICI, let's call them from now on, does improve function down the track and make it quicker that you will rehabilitate. However, there's a lot of papers out there that disregard that. So I think we just need to think about what happens in nature. And in nature, for men, in order to keep their penis healthy, need to get those nocturnal erections. And so whether or not you're getting, your penis is getting exercise from injectables or from a pump, it's the thing that's important is getting the, the exercise going. So, and keeping, getting your penis to be erect one way or another. So I think it's too simple just to say, yes, they do or no, they don't. But I have patients who, believe it or not, prefer to use injections than they do the pump because they find the pump annoying. So they might give them, know that a dose of 0.2 of a mil is great for an erection that they can have sex with, but they need, it's their day they just need to do their exercise and they're too lazy to use the pump. So they just use half a dose and let it go up and go down again. So there is a difference though, between the type of blood flow that goes into the penis tissue. So when you use ICI, it's arterial, so it's oxygenated blood. And when you're using the pump, you're dragging in venous blood. But the, you're getting, if you're taking a low dose, you know, tadatafil or something like that, that's giving you extra blood flow and you're exercising anyway, I think the main purpose of getting the erection is about the stretching and keeping the tissues healthy. So I think that one paper is drawing a very long bow and using injections is fantastic from the perspective of it's great for your relationship, it's great for a guy to see that he's got an erection and then his penis is dead, um, but I think using a pump for rehab is as effective. Fantastic. And so everyone knows, Melissa is the rehab queen. She has an online program, which we're linking to in the description box below. We're probably going to mention a lot during this interview that talks you through even those options she mentioned as well, the pump and how that works injection, how it all, because it is a big picture and works together. It sounds though like with that paper, it wasn't necessarily then suggesting that it's going and acting on the nerves. It's still like the pump, it's acting more on blood flow moving into the penis. So, and all, all those papers really, it tends to be this just general trend that if you do something and if you do a bit more than something, maybe even daily, you're more likely to get better results down the line. Is that about right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And I just think the the whole, you know, if you use it or lose it, you just need to use it one way or another. Yeah, absolutely. Now it's great because you touched on something that's coming up in the next question, which is that difference between when you use a pump to injection. So both of them are going to bring blood flow in, so they're both going to create a stretch. However, the blood flow type is different that comes in. And I had a gentleman ask, when using Trimix injections, does the erect penis get cold like he's finding it does with a vacuum device and the ring that he uses, or does it stay warm? Is it more like a natural erection? Much more like a natural erection. So the, the difference is, is, as I said before, when you're using a pump, it's pumping in arterial blood. I'm sorry, venous blood. When you use injection, it's pumping in arterial blood. The other thing is, is that the way the injection is working is that it's vasodilating the tissues in the penis. So you've got a constant blood flow. So the penis stays pink and warm to touch. And also, you know, your penis is like an iceberg and it goes all the way back in your body. I always say to guys, you know, your penis is like three times bigger than you think because two thirds of it is hiding from you. And the, when you use an injection, that whole shaft, in, even in the internal bit, gets engorged with blood. 
Whereas when you're using a pump and putting a ring on it for intercourse, you're only getting, you know, the engorgement past the ring, which is why it then goes kind of a dusky blue and it's cool to touch. And I think it's important to note that there's no harm being done because I get asked that all the time. Like when I use the ring and the pump, am I doing any harm? And it's perfectly fine for it not to have a lot of blood flow for 30 minutes as long as you release the ring after 30 minutes. But there is definitely a difference in the the way that, that the penis feels to an outsider. Yeah. Yes. That's so interesting. Is that also why with a pump and a ring system there can be that hinge effect where there's a hanging down? Right. Interesting. Yeah. Because I think I always explain to guys, it's kind of like, you know, a lamb's tail when you put a lactic band on it, you know, it's like, there's no blood flow back that way. Whereas a real penis, a penis that's a normal erection is, is, is hard in there. So it's sticking up. Yes. Would you say then there, there is some extra positive then to incorporating injections as well as the pump because that area is going to be receiving engorgement and blood flow? Yes and no, because when you're using a pump for rehab, so you're pumping him up, letting him down, pumping him up, letting him down, you are driving, dragging the blood through the internal part of the penis as well. The difference is just when you're using it for sex is when you're blocking it off. So I feel like when you're using it for sex with the ring, you you definitely an injection is better from an exercise point of view, but you're using the pump from a rehab perspective, you're getting that part of the penis is getting blood in anyway. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm right in thinking you can use a pump daily, even twice a day, but with injections, you can't do that. And I'd love you to speak to that. I've had a few questions through on safety, really. How often can we use this? How far apart? What what in terms of timings do you recommend with injections? Yeah, so you, I have written in all my literature 48 hours apart. To be honest, the reason I say 48 hours apart is because most people do halve everything I tell them. You know, if they tell you they're drinking five beers a day, they're drinking 10. And if you tell them to do something once in 48 hours, they might do it once in 24 hours, especially some of my younger, like spinal patients, for instance. Um, so, but 24 hours is really important that you have the gap. And the gap is important because the risk of priapism and erection that will last too long is much higher if you use the injections more regularly than that. And as exciting as it sounds to have an erection that lasts for hours on end, it's actually dangerous to your penis because it's not getting enough blood flow and it's just not good. It's not good for it at all to be like that. Oh, absolutely. In fact, one person asked um, how how safe amount and amount of time for an erection to be up is, is sensible with an injection. I try and organize the drugs because we compound, I get them compounded and different parts of the injectable ingredients do t- hardness and time and everyone reacts differently. So the way I do it is that I would get people to start on a very low dose and figure out how hard and how the time and then jiggle it for their particular person. You know, it's kind of like a spoke really. Um, but I try and make it 30 minutes to half an hour because not that many people are going to be sexually active, particularly at this age, more than an hour. But safely, you can have a good solid erection for two hours. And after that, you really do want it to be starting to head down. So it's not a problem if you have a semi-erection for much longer than that, four, five, seven hours, because, but to have a rock hard erection for longer than two hours, you really want to start doing something about getting it down. Okay, so that's sort of 30 minutes to an hour is probably that sweet spot. And I love that you mentioned that this is quite actually a bespoke operation. This isn't just getting given one script and that's either going to work or not. Now, something I'm often really encouraging people when they want to go down this avenue because I've heard anecdotes from men saying that they had to try, you know, all these different formulas at, at different dosages and they got some pain with some and not with another. And something I love that your program is doing is you're offering that one-on-one consultation included within that where I understand men can actually have a script produced by yourself so that they don't have to go to all these extra people and that during that consult, you can also start to do that, that tailoring. Exactly. So when I see people face to face in my clinic, what I would do then is give them their first injection and teach them how to do it. And then we wait 10 minutes and it sounds terrible, but we give that, we give it a score out of 10 and I'll go 10 out of 10 being hard enough for intercourse. So how you remember it was before. What do you think it is now? Then I'll get them, give them some other samples of different mixes because I'll have a rough idea of how they respond and send them home and then bring them up a week later and say, how did those different mixtures go? 
and then we can work out how they react to each drug. And and the problem with GPs write a script for a thing called Cabaject, which is only contains alprostadol. And alprostadol causes pain in the shaft of the penis for one in 20 men. So if you're that one in 20 men and the first penile injection you ever had was alprostadol, you're going to think it's the injection that caused the pain when it doesn't. It's actually your body's reaction to that drug. So I never start people on alprostadol. I always start them on papaverin and phentylamine, which is never causes pain. So they know it's not the injection that's caused the pain. And then if they need the extra hardness, we can add a bit of alprostadol in. If people aren't too sensitive to it, we can add a bit of lignocaining. So it really is like there is an infinite number of mixtures that we can come up with. When And I taught a lot of people to do injections online. So... Often I'll have people that bought the program, they'll have their 30 minute consult and they'll say, I've watched how you've taught it on there and that's great. I'd like to try that way, but I've tried them before and they've been painful. And then I'll say, okay, these are maybe the reasons why. And we'll go through that to them. And then obviously I can't give them five different medications as a sample, but if they're in Australia, I can arrange for the mixture I think is most likely to work for them to be sent to them. And then I've even had guys, I've stood here with Jeffrey, my plastic penis, and they've been on the other end of a Zoom with theirs, and we've done it together. And then same thing, I'll give them a call later on and say, how did that go? And from there, we can find out. And the only disadvantage for guys in the Zoom situation is that we may need to buy more than one bottle sent to them before we get the sweet spot. But we always get there in the end. And in America, there are quite a lot of guys in America that have taught injections this way. And they've just sent me their GP's email and I've just written them a letter and said, I've taught your patient how to do this. Would you mind ordering this prescription from your local compounding pharmacy? And we go through the same process. That's great. And that makes it so clear how everyone has probably their own erection recipe. Yeah. And you're there being the Gordon Ramsay of the erection recipe. And I think that's why I like that. Gordon Ramsay of injections. I'm a bit lighter though. I'm not as rude as him. Right. I was not <laughs> just gonna have one swearing's involved. <laughs> but I think as well, it is really important because I do often see men who say to me, I have tried injections, but they didn't work. But they'd just been given this stop standard approach to it. Or, you know, there's online companies that you can like have an online consult and they'll send you an injectable and a video of how to do it. And they've got, I've tried that and it didn't work. It probably didn't work because they put it in the wrong place or it was the wrong mix for them. So I actually think that one-on-one consult while you're trying to do this at some stage in that process is invaluable because everybody's bodies react differently. Everybody's had slightly different procedures. Everyone's a different age. Everyone had different pre-op erections or pre-radiation erections. So all of those things, there's some stop standard things that everyone needs to do, but it does need to be tailored for the individual. Yeah. Tailoring and guidance sounds really key when it comes to this particular option. Um, I have quite a few questions through that go back to the sort of the safety aspects of injections. People want to know, is there a risk of fibrosis, peronies or scar tissue when it comes to using injections? So I get this asked this all the time. I can honestly say that I've never had a patient come back that has developed peronies because of injection. Because, but I have had a lot of patients that have developed peronies post prostate cancer treatment and they've been using injections. But every time I ask somebody, have you been using your pump for rehab between the injections? The answer, and they've developed a scar tissue, it's no. And I think it's really important that when you're using injections that you change the spots you know, that you move it around because if you did it in the same place all the time, you would get scars. So as long as you change the position, using an auto injector, I think is key because if you're doing it with your hand, you're more likely to be slow and move it a little bit, which is going to cause more damage than a fast in and out. Uh, I think that makes a big difference to scarring, but most importantly, it's the care you do for your penis in between because You know, there's a much higher chance of developing peronies without injections post-prostate treatment just because you're not getting spontaneous erections at night time anymore and it's not getting any exercise. So it's the guys that I have seen that have, I've had patients who have never used injections that have got peronies. I've had patients who have used injections and got peronies and I've had patients who have never, who have used injections like a guy we interviewed recently on the podcast, he's done 300 injections and doesn't have a single problem. But 
Mm -hmm. He's fantastic. He does it three, four times a week, but he's very good at making sure he takes his daily dose of tadadapil. He makes sure he massages his penis regularly with a bit of vitamin E and he uses his pump rare every day. Fantastic. Gosh, that last list. I hope everybody <laughs> was writing notes there. That's a really nice description of an aftercare from the sounds of it is so important when it comes to injections. And so everyone knows the podcast that Melissa just referred to is the Penis Project podcast. They now have over 200 episodes. They're extremely, just every single one of them is jam-packed with information like this, but also stories from real men who have had erectional penile issues, particularly after prostate cancer. And I really recommend checking that out again. That will be in the description. When actually comes to something like an auto injector as well, is that something that men can just go and say somebody out there's listening to this, they're already quite happy with injections, but that's the one thing they want to try. Can they just go and purchase an auto injector? Is that something they should have a consult about? No, they definitely can. So if they went to the shop on my website, they can just buy an auto injector. We get them in from America. Um, so I buy them in bolts in America, unfortunately, cause I have to pay for them in American dollars. They are expensive. I think they're like $87 or something, but they, um, they are, I think they're a game changer. Like oh, if I had a penis, there's no way I'd be able to stick a needle straight in it. So you don't see the needle anymore. You press a button. Um, also they're, they're just safer. The delivery method is good. And so they can just buy that online. And then if they go to a YouTube, I have a whole free video on exactly how to use it. So if they know they've got the right dose, they've been doing it. There's no problem. They can just start using one of both. Oh, fantastic. My gosh, the description box is going to be rich with links. Great. <laughs> Very good. Um, okay. Fantastic. Oh, and for anybody out there, I thought somebody who might not have heard this word Peroni's disease before, do you mind just quickly talking about what that is? So Peroni's is when you get a bent penis basically, and they can be in all kinds of angles. Um, and it doesn't, it's not just men who have had prostate cancer that get it. I actually see a lot of men with Peroni's disease for other reasons. So it's when you get scar tissue built up in the shaft of the penis. And then when your penis tries to get an erection, you only see that you've got it when it's erect. Um, and so you'll put the, and you won't get even blood flow. So if there's scar tissue on say the left side of the shaft, that bit won't stretch as much as the right and it'll curb to the left. Yeah. That makes sense. And you also, the other thing is, is that people can be genetically predisposed to it. So, um, if anyone has anyone in their family or themselves has dipturns contractions in their hands where they might have a trigger finger or they have really, um, like delineated kind of ligaments, it looks like down there. That is the same gene that gives that. And in your feet, it's called Lederhausen. So that kind of scar tissue gene it is Lederhausen's in your feet, dipturns in your hands, and Peroni's in your fingers. That's fascinating. I know a few men actually wrote in with some Peroni's questions that um, I've got an interview coming up with Dr. Joe Milios, so I may, I may keep them to one side. So we'll go deeper into that um, with, with her. Yeah, and um, so we actually do... I am just develop. I see a lot of patients with that and I work closely with Joe about that. And it really is, Peroni's treatment I think is something that you need to have a prescriber and a physiotherapist because there's three herbs, which maybe we can talk about on another interview, plus taking a daily dose of tadalacool and using a vacurep pump is so important or a um, traction device. And as well as what you'll talk to Dr. Joe about, because she has some other amazing adjuncts for that. But definitely the best results I've seen and people who avoid surgery from Peroni's is when they do that combination. Oh, that's fantastic to hear. So, so many of the questions were, well, can we actually do anything about this? Because what a lot of them have heard is that it's, it's surgery or nothing. Mm. So that's fantastic. There's all those options as well. So at the moment, um, most of... The big, probably the urolog, the most prominent urologist in Western Australia who deals with Peronis, he sends all of his Peronis patients when he gets the first referral for three months of this conservative program. And then he only operates if that hasn't worked. And, you know, well, and the, most of the time it does. And so the treatment with Peronis is as soon as you notice the change, you need to get on to, to the conservative treatment because you can correct it. It doesn't have to be surgery. Fantastic. What would the first sign somebody would see? Is it they would just start to see a bend? I'm guessing though that would only be when erect. Is that right? Yeah, that's the problem. I think because often guys will say, I've had my first injection and I've now got Peronis, but they've had Peronis. They just haven't had an erection for a year or so. So it looks like it's the injection that's caused it, but it's not. It's the fact that they've now got an erection. 
So often men will get pain with an erection is one of the first signs of Peronis and the other is changing shape. Sometimes it can be an indent, sometimes most of the time it's a curve in one or the other, a direction or up and down. Um, but unfortunately, then when it happens to guys who have still got good erections, it's obvious quickly that for men post prostate cancer treatment, they can't see it because their erections aren't working, which brings me back to why I think using a pump and doing the rehab is so important because prevention is much better than cure. Oh, absolutely. And for everyone hearing this, yeah, doesn't want to have to have to go down that route. And it sounds like, again, another reason to be creating erections regularly so you can just keep an eye on things yeah. and see what's going on. Great. Great. Now, you mentioned um, taking low dose um, Tadalafil or Viagra or Cialis earlier on. A question that came through actually in, in um, connection to injections was, could you use injections while you're on that low daily dose? Definitely. So all of the, my patients, I make sure they're on the low daily dose because that I think of those as vitamin pills for your penis and then use injections. And the only difference is, is that your dose of injection will be different you won't need as much because you've got a background dose of vasodilation. So as long as when you're trying out your injections, you're already on that low dose, fine. So, you know, like if you Googled, can I use intracavernosal injections and take a PDE5 medication, it will say no. But that's presuming that you're just going to take a one-off Viagra and use an injection and you definitely can't do that. But taking your background daily dose whilst you're getting your dose right for your injection is perfectly safe because it's taking that into consideration. Right, that's fantastic to know because absolutely it's you know such a no-no. But actually, if there's if it's taken more like that vitamin, it's a different kind of symphony that's going on. Yeah, it's kind of like I get very upset often because I will my patients will have been taking their daily dose and using injections, and then suddenly they're starting to get maybe a fifty or sixty percent erection just with their daily dose, and I'll say. You might not need injections anymore. Let's try a full dose of Viagra or Cialis or Spendra. And they'll, I'll give them the prescription and they'll go to the pharmacy and the pharmacy will say, well, you can't take a daily dose and that. And you, that's correct. You can't take Viagra and Spendra as a full dose together. But when you're taking a background dose, you can do a challenge dose as well. So I think we all have to be careful when pharmacists have got our best interest at heart, but they don't know what your diagnosis is or your history. They're only looking at the black and white, very two-dimensional with, which is that prescription and that prescription. But there is a lot of nuances when we prescribe things that is actually about the individual's story. So don't take that for gospel, just actually ask the question. Absolutely. And that's such a good example of how there's actually so much intricacy when it comes into each of these options. It's not just injections or Viagra or the pump. It's how does it all work together and how does each one work for you? And that's something I've actually enjoyed with doing your program. Um, it's actually, especially with Viagra and Cialis, you have this wonderful table of all the different ones, all the different potential side effects from each and how it all works together. I thought that was so good. Um, another question on the similar kind of vein is whether you could use a pump with injections at the same time, either before or after and whether that's even a good idea. Would it improve anything? Yeah, so I... You know, if guys have got, you know, there's a difference between showers and growers. So do you want me to quickly talk about that? So go for it. Um, for anyone listening, you know, a shower is a guy whose penis is always out in front and looks very impressive all the time. And when they get an erection, it usually just gets hard rather than larger. And a grower is a guy whose penis is more retracted and then gets longer and harder at the same time. So if you're a shower, using injections is easier because there's more of a shaft. So for the growers, I always say, Use your pump first because it just makes the target bigger and you've got more shaft. So yeah, after you've finished using the pump and doing your rehab, you're going to he's going to stay a little bit in gorge for a while. So that definitely makes the process of injecting easier. When you use a pump, you can use a pump after the injection, and I do have patients that do that. The only risk of that is obviously you've just caused a minimal, a tiny trauma to the shaft of the penis. And then if you went and used the pump straight away, you've got more chance of getting a bruise. That said, having a bruise isn't a problem. They go away really quickly. They sort of just look like someone's giving you a love bite on your penis and it's nothing to be upset about and it's not doing any harm. It looks scary, but it's not. So I think as long as you're aware of that, it's okay. And I, I mean, I have not very many patients because most people, if they use injections and the dose is right, don't need to use a pump after. But I do have a few patients that 
they have the pain with alprostadol and so they need another mix which doesn't work as well for them but they can get like a 70 percent that just doesn't hang around as long and in those cases i'll say yeah look, use your vacurect as well and leave the ring on the waist and they don't have any problems great so that's wonderful to hear that that is safe to do there's there's there no, no problem yeah. yeah i wonder is it actually is, is injections an option that there's not that many reasons somebody couldn't do it. Because I did have a man who, who messaged and said, I've had non-nerve sparing. Can I use injections? And he also wanted, actually, he already had a slight bend in his penis. He didn't mention coronary. There's a slight bend. He wondered if that meant he could. And that did get me thinking, are there any kind of reasons that people should be hesitant? No. So there's a lot of reasons why people should be hesitant about using the oral medication, the PDE fives, because they can interact with some other medications. And so I think it's important that whoever prescribes those for you, you don't buy them off the street, that you know that they're not, that they're safe with your other meds. But with injections, there's not really, I, I can't really think of a reason why you wouldn't, because it's very localized to the penis tissue. So you're not getting that interaction anywhere else. Um, I, and to be honest, very they work for most people. And for people with non-nerve sparing surgery, that's your best option because your nerves aren't going to wake up down the track. They're not there to do it. You're not going to get spontaneous erections. So going straight for injections is an excellent option. Um, and yeah, and I mean, there's very few people that injections don't work for. And there is a few, but very few. If somebody did try, go. Th have you ever had this? Somebody's gone through that injection process with you, but they're not staying erect from any injections. Have you experienced that? If that's the case, what's happening in that scenario? Yeah, I have. And it's always the same case, which is they have a thing called a vascular leak. So this is a very simple way of explaining it. But if you think about arteries are taking blood into the shaft of the penis and the veins are taking the blood out. When you get an erection, the blood goes in and all of the vessels fill up with blood and then the, ner the veins are are like it's like someone's parked a car all and they're not able to let the blood out until you're ready for the erection to go down then everything starts to settle and the blame the blood can drain out but you can get a vascular leak and i think of that like if you had a bucket and you were filling it up with water and it had a small hole at the bottom so you can get the bucket three quarters full but it's never going to get really full because it's slowly dripping out the bottom and that's what happens when you get a vascular leak and we don't know why men develop this but we have found that men will often develop a vascular leak between six and 12 months post-op. So everything could have been going along fantastic. They could have been, been using injections and it's all working great. And then for a few months, it just, they get this, they can't get a proper erection. They can only get like a 70%. And that is because they developed a vascular leak. Most of the time that fixes itself. And honestly, we don't know why. But it just seems to happen. Occasionally, people can get a long-term vascular leak. And I've seen that also in very young men who have bought penis pumps online and thought they're going to make their penis bigger and like basically caused a lot of trauma down there and the veins just stop, stop doing what they're doing and keeping the blood in. There is no cure for a vascular leak. So you either have to hope that it's going to cure itself or you have to find a workaround. And the easiest workaround is using a lasso. So... You get your penis to a full erection and whack on a lasso or a ring at the base to hold it erect before it has the chance to drain it. Yeah, and I'm right in thinking lasso is one of those constriction rings. Yeah. That no, essentially looks like a lasso. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And they just, I, I mean, I, you can use any ring, but I think lassos are easy because they just have a bead at the bottom and they're so easy to release afterwards. And if you have a female partner that bead is titillating for the clitoris at the same time so it's a bit of an added bonus fantastic good win win and we did have a lot of questions in that were about how could the partner become more involved in penile injections i'm sure you see so many partnerships who are taking this journey together and i'm wondering what advice do you have for men who really want to involve their partner in this process and of course if while there's great results the spontaneity when it comes to injections is quite lacking so i'd love to hear um Ray, what you recommend so I love it when couples come in together and I can teach them both how to do it because let's just pretend they're a heterosexual couple or even if they're not, even if they're same-sex couple. The guy who's about to get the injection is thinking nothing else other than is this going to hurt? This crazy woman's about to stick that in my penis. So having a partner with you 
that is paying attention and watching where it goes and all of that is definitely beneficial because they're more likely to take more in than you are. So I think that's great. And I do have, you know, guys that have got big bellies, it's hard to see their penis to find the right spot and hold it. So in those cases, and I have got a video on my YouTube channel of a couple doing it together. It's actually me and my husband with a fake penis and he's very silly in it, waving it around. But anyway, um, it's, it, it tells you how to do it. So that yeah, demonstrates as well, like having fun, having a good sense of humor going through this together. Yeah, it would make a difference. So I think it is, but, but I also think it's, if you can possibly do it on your own, it's not going to be spontaneous for you, the person who's doing the injection, but there's nothing sexy about going to your partner and saying, do you think I should do an injection tonight, dear? That's not a turn. So I really encourage the guys I teach to do injections, learn how to do it autonomously. And if you've had a really nice day together or you're about to go and have an afternoon nap on the weekend or you've had gone out somewhere and had a laugh and you're thinking that your partner might be keen, just go and do it on your own and then go and start your foreplay. You'll have a flaccid erect penis and it will become erect like naturally. And if they're keen, great. It has been spontaneous for them. It's not a passion killer and if they're not keen it doesn't matter because you can have solo sex or you can just let it go up and down and go oh well I've had really good exercise and I don't need to use my pump today yeah no, so fantastic that's I a good way of looking through it it's important and often when we speak to couples the partner who's not injecting is very keen at the beginning to be involved in that process and then they'll come back six months a year later and go well it was that I just wish we could do it without me having to know about it now. And I'll have that exact conversation with them and the partner who's still injecting it go, that would be great. I would love that. I'd love to be taken by surprise. Mm. So that's really interesting. Be, be, it sounds like throughout all of that though, no matter where the couple, how the couple decides to do it, it is that element of communication sort of being at least through going through this together from the beginning, the knowing what's going on and then deciding how do we want to do this so that it, it it does make our sex life how we want it. Yeah. And I also think it's really important for partners to understand that the lack of erectile function is not a lack of, of libido and not a lack of arousal. You know, so like, because I'll often have partners say to me, oh, I just feel like it's chemical. They don't really want me. They're just making that happen. But then what? They, they really want it to happen. It's just that's the only way they can override the problems that are going on. And so... You know, no one's going to go and stick a needle in their penis just for the hell of it. They're doing it because they're aroused. They want to be with you. They want to be intimate with you. It's just they can't it happen on their own. Yes. Um, that's great. That actually reminds me of another question that was asked um, from the audience, which is whether factors like stress and actually how aroused a man is, does that then affect the results from the injection? It's definitely quicker if you're aroused. The response is mm-hmm. But you will get an erection regardless. So with tablets, excuse me, with tablets, if you're not aroused, you won't get an erection. But with injections, you still will. <laughs> excuse me. Oh, that's okay. Thank you, moment. <laughs> what are we down there on? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I think um, it, it helps if you're aroused. Stress doesn't affect it. Um, alcohol doesn't affect injections. Well, it doesn't affect the effect of the injection material, but it might affect your ability to put it there. But right, and it's actually kind of a. And so, somebody could they have? Could they use an injection? I mean, if they hadn't had steady hands after they'd had a few wines, is that is that okay? No contraindication whatsoever. It's interesting. It sounds like it's actually a very interesting approach. Like not interesting, but a different approach than Viagra or Cialis, where there's there's a lot of. Um, other factors that will come into play on how effective that is. Definitely. Like, you know, Viagra works much better on an empty stomach. Cialis doesn't really matter. You know, Viagra is only going to stay in the system for four hours. Cialis, 36. Vendra is only going to take 15 minutes to work. So, you know, I think there's a lot of nuances, as I talk about in the program, of how you use those drugs as well. Um, mm. and, and I have got patients who use all of those for some occasions, and use injections for others when they want to have their erection last a lot longer or they don't want those things to be an issue. Yeah, so I think that's a great place for a person to get to. I think the beginning of this journey has so many men feeling that 
their option is only try Viagra and if that doesn't work, they don't know what to do. Whereas as you're saying, it's not just that. You could try Viagra, but, you know, say ours works actually completely differently. And then there's so many more even within that. And then you will have this whole other menu of options potentially with injections, with pumps. And I think that's so empowering to have that yeah. option mindset of there are so many things to try. And that if something, am I right in thinking if, if men listening to this are thinking, oh, I have tried the injections, but it was either painful or I didn't get as hard as I wanted to, that um, it still is worth them exploring that again. When when would you say is a moment actually for to kind of put a line in the sand and say injections are not for somebody? Well, I think you definitely need to have tried more than one big strap. Mm -hmm. um, definitely. Because it often takes three or four different mixes before you find a sweet spot. And I also think if the person prescribing it for you is sensible, they are going to start off with a very, very small dose. So, you know, rarely do I give someone, very rarely do I give someone their first injection and it's perfect. Because, and if I do that, I think, well, that was close. I could have given that guy a prior present. Like I would much rather give someone their first injection and it be 30, 40% and go, okay, I know how they react now and I can tweak this for them. So I don't want someone to get a prior prism, an erection that won't go down. I, that's a very unpleasant experience usually. So I think it's much better to have five or six goes and go, okay, we know what the sweet spot is now and we'll go forward from there than it is to get it right the first time. And so I think having realistic expectations around this is not a quick fix, this is a trial and error until we get the right mix for you or the right method, whatever that is, and then we'll get there. And it really is a case of it is something that you need to practice makes perfect and you need to be persistent. Yeah, which and that comes up time and time again with any option within yeah. and penal rehab it's itself. So, yeah. That same mantra. Yeah. And the guys that do the best are the ones that everybody stuffs it up. Everyone gets a bruise. Everyone gets it in the wrong spot. You know, everyone has a day where they're like, I'm sure I did everything perfect and it didn't work. Right. Or you might have just moved a little bit or, you know, you might have left it out of the fridge too long or, you know, there's just, that happens. But also if you're honest, in when everything was working perfectly, everyone has days when they stop it up. So this is what happens. So is it the guys you see you have the most success, the ones who having that having that moment where it didn't work, it doesn't stop them. They go, okay, I'm gonna try again or I'm going to what can I tweak to make this potentially more effective or I'm gonna go back to yourself and have a consultation, sort of figure out what they can do going forward. Is that definitely and if, I think it it you know, it really takes less than three doses. Not, you know, them trying at least three times. Whether, because, you know, you might give them a sample dose. The first test they might have might be like, oh, it was like 70% and it lasted for half an hour, but it needed to be harder. And then in that case, you go, oh, you're on the, that's the right mix for you. We just need to increase the dose. Or the other big thing that I think people confuse is when you're using intracarbonosal injections, you use an insulin syringe. So it's measured in units. So men will think that they're using 40 mils of this that they're putting in their penis, but they're actually using 0.4 of them in. Ah, interesting. Right. So I think it's, you know, when you go, just increase it by 10, they think, well, God, I will be another 10 mils, but that whole syringe only the calls one mil. So the incremental increases are a tiny amount. And so I've had men say, oh, I tried injections, but I got to 50 mils and the doctor told me to increase it and I thought he'd lost his brain, so I just never went back. But right. The mistake was that the person teaching them didn't explain that this is not 50 mils, in 0.5 of a mil, and then they're like, oh, I would have increased it if I had understood that. So, you know, I think it's a lot about perception as well and making sure that the message is really clear. Absolutely. It sounds like education with this is the bedrock. This is not as simple as fill in a script. You'll just kind of know what to do and it'll work. Yeah. yeah. You know, so that's that's why a lot of people that we see is they have tried and it hasn't worked. And it's always one of these kind of things that just hasn't been tweaked or they've just given up. And, and it might not be that the practitioner is not giving them the right information. It's just their expectation has been that it's just going to have one injection that's going to go up and it's all going to be perfect. Yeah. 
have you ever found somebody met, uh, messaged in about the idea of changing sensations? Um, have you had men say that when they use injection, it's either lessened or increased or just changed the sensation of their penis? Yeah, I have. Not often. So most people don't, but I have had a couple of guys, yeah, probably a couple a year actually, tell me that they feel like their penis feels more wooded when they use injections. Mm, interesting. Which may be fact. I think it's more likely to be a psychosocial, like it's not in their head, it's not natural, so they don't feel like it's natural. The other thing that I think that can be caused from as well is just the nature of having your prostate cancer treatment, whatever it can be, can actually change the sensation of your penis for a period of time. That usually goes back to normal, but you don't notice that the sensation's changed until you use an injection and then you've got a full erection. So you're like, well, it's doing what it should be, but it doesn't feel the same. You know, it's like actually the treatment that has changed it. So, yeah, and I, and there is no denying that if, you're that one in 20 man who is affected by alprostadol. Some people won't get, some people have a lot of pain with it. Other people will just have an eight and they'll be, it just doesn't feel like my penis. And that can often just be overcome by changing the mix and taking the alprostadol out. And so usually when I meet guys who tell me that they've tried injections and the first, the injections they've tried has been trimix, which has alprostadol in it and they haven't tried one with it out. Fantastic. It's good to hear because I think that's really common. People saying they're experiencing pain and that's good to know well, there's potentially a solution by change, just changing the mixture and there's a few different things to try. Yeah. Um, that's really good. I had a gentleman actually say that he found it was quite, quite stingy. And I'm assuming it means the erection. Something I found really interesting from doing your program was you mentioned that uh, with the needle going into the penile tissue, that the penile tissue itself doesn't have pain receptors. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So the intracavernatial spongy tissue doesn't have pain receptors. So you, if you, if it feels stingy, it means you're going in the layer of skin and there's a very thin layer between that and the intracavernosum tissue. So I say to my guys, if you're feeling a stinging sensation, it's not in the intracavernosum. You shouldn't feel it be going in there. Like, right. Okay. When I used to work in emergency departments and we'd put in like chest drains, for instance, you know, people would come in with a pneumothorax and you put a chest drain in. It's amazing. You only put the local on the skin and then the chest drain goes straight through the, between the ribs, the gap in the rib and you're into costal muscles. And then it's inside the lung. The lung is very similar tissue. It's spongy tissue. There's no pain receptors in there either. So only feel those big, horrible things go in the skin. They're quite, and it, it's the same. There just isn't sensation. There's not nerves in there to feel it. So if they are feeling a continuous sting, it's either reaction to the El prostatal, or they've put it in too shallow. Interesting. And I'm wondering that with the auto injector, does that also circumvent that problem from happening? Because it just goes into the exact depth that it's supposed to. Yeah. So sometimes guys will put the auto injector on the wrong angle. So it will just kind of go down the side of the penis and not into the middle. But as long as you follow the instructions and use the auto injector correctly, which is the whole circle needs to sit flat on the shaft of the penis, it's always on the right angle. Yeah. Fantastic. This has been great. I think my final, final question is somebody wanted to know how much does it cost to be doing penile injections? Are you paying each time? Can you calculate sort of in the end how much an injection and, you know, an erection is worth? Sure. So everybody's uses, all the pharmacies charge a different amount. So if you buy your auto injector once, which is about $90. And I mean, I'm still using the same one as a tester in my clinic. I've been using for five years. So they're very sturdy. Um, but that might be pharmacy I use in Western Australia, which does post to the whole of Australia, charges $145 for five mils, which is 500 units. So I try and adjust my mixture. So and you get about 15 to 20 injections out of that bottle. So if someone uses their first bottle and they've only got 10, I then double the strength. So next time they'd use half the amount and get 20 shots. So that works out to about $8 an injection. Right. Um, but there's a lot of different pharmacies, like compounding pharmacies that I send prescriptions to all around Australia and they have different prices. Some are less and some are more. But if you get the mix right, it can be very cost effective. It's just about making sure the dose is right. Yeah, fantastic. 
That's great. Is that the same? I'm wondering in America, the pricing quite similar. I I got one patient who um, spends half his time in New York and half his time here, which fascinates me because there's compounding pharmacies in New York that take Australian scripts, which is amazing. But um, and yes, and, and he says he pays pretty much the same price. It's interesting to know. Fantastic. Well, Melissa, I think for people to then find out more about your work and your program, we'll be putting links in the description box below, but in the program in particular, um, I'd love you to just let people know a little bit more about that. Because for me, I find that actually to be always innovating the way a consultation could be happening, which it just thrills me because I know from having so many conversations with men in my audience that sometimes they can wait months to get a consultation with somebody who's a genuine specialist in this area. Um, and then even then when you're in the room having, you know, an hour consultation, you may after that forget little bits or only take in maybe honestly 10%. So I think it's really exciting that you have put together a program, which would be, I don't know, there's something like eight consultations almost with yourself. Yeah. It's just video education that somebody could work through. I mean, I love it. They could work through it with their partner right there. That could be a way of really bringing them together so they can learn all that together. Um, and then they also get that consultation with you via Zoom. And I'm right in thinking they can actually sort of skip the queue a bit to see you. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So the reason I started the online program is there's like a three, three and a half month wait to see me at the moment. And um, the other nurse practitioner who works with me in this field, there's about a four to six week wait. And that's really frustrating, you know. So I was like, how can I speed this up? So I basically recorded what eight consults would be and then popped it into the program but the reason we offer the I offer the half hour free consult with me is that that whole bespoke thing. It does need to be tweaked for individuals. But a lot of what I tell people is very repetitive. So I think, and also you're hundred percent right. Like people, you can't take everything in in a consult. So this is a way, and I've put aside times where people who have bought the program because they don't need all the repetitive stuff, and we're just going to tweak this whole program to suit them, I've got times aside, you know, where they skip the queue for the appointment. So we just do a Zoom consult like this and we go, okay, you already know all the nuts and bolts of what you're doing and you're doing it. How can we tweak this to suit you perfectly? So yeah. And so that those people do skip the queue, um, which I think my face to face patients probably wouldn't like the idea of that. But it's it is about they don't the face-to-face -face patients need seven, eight consoles to get to the point. These guys often only need one or two. Wow. One, one or two consoles, as in once they've done the program, you may only need one or two extras yeah. just to do that tailoring, that bespoke, everything else is covered on the So in there is there. Is a good example. I saw a guy who'd done the first three modules of the program and you can choose at any time in the program to book your free consult. He chose after the three modules. So he's done the first three modules. He's like, my God, I've learned, I'm 70 years of age. I've learned more about my penis in the last day than I ever knew possible, you know? Yeah. And so then him and his wife were on Zoom this morning, seven o'clock this morning. We went, he told me his history. I was like, okay, be you, we need blah, blah, blah. I've sent him a prescription and he's going to book a follow-up consult in eight weeks time when he's seen the rest of it and he's done those first few steps. Yeah, fantastic. And because he's in the program, he doesn't have to then wait to book the online console in the three and a half months. He gets one of those slots because he's done that. Yeah, lovely. Okay. Well, for everybody who wants to find out more about that, again, links in the description below. I'll also have a pinned comment as well. Is there anything you'd love to add at the end, Melissa, about the program or injection therapy or penile rehab in general? Well, I think... Number one, I think that I think penile injections are fantastic. I think they're a game changer for men. But I also think the other thing that we talk a lot about in the program is that it's not all about your penis. It's not penis focused and penis centric. So I think this can be a real opportunity for people, particularly people in couples, to mix up the script and do other things. So a lot of the clients that I see have never used a sex toy before or they've you know, not thought about the fact that their female partner has got changes to her vagina as well. So penetrative sex might not be the be all and end all and that have it, they can both stimulate each other and have an orgasm without an eruption. And so there's a whole module in that program called Outer Course. And I just think it's really important that we don't just 
try and replicate what happened in the past, but maybe use this as an opportunity to mix things up and do something you haven't done before. And it sounds crazy, but a lot of couples tell me their sex life is better a year post prostate cancer treatment than it has been for the 10 years before because they got a bit boring. Yes. Isn't that an amazing result? I, I get such a thrill when I have emails like that too. If people saying it's actually used as an opportunity, almost their second honeymoon to just oh. let's go back to basics and who are we now and what do we enjoy now? And you can end up with a sex life that's yeah, even better than you had. Yeah. I saw a guy last week by Zoom who lives in a country town in WA and he said, do you know, I've discovered that I can have an orgasm just by nipple stimulation. And this guy's 81. He's like, my awesome. I never knew that because I always had an erection and just concentrated on that. Um, yeah. That's amazing. Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, the body's a playground. There's so many erogenous zones. <laughs> and yeah, that's, and it's that different mindset as well of seeing this as, okay, <laughs> things don't work like they used to, but there are probably all sorts of new things that will now work and seeing as that opportunity to explore. So that's a wonderful message to and end on. Another whole conversation, which I'd love to have you one day, is second because I think people think of them as big purple horrible vibrators with, you know, koalas and thicky tons and they're just not like that anymore and there's so many amazing options for couples and solos and everything that I think that's just a, a whole area that, that we just don't learn about. Absolutely. Oh, you're right. Where, where are any of us learning about that in the world? But it's that exactly as you said, there's so much more than what we usually think of that's just been shown to us in popular media or the first sex shop that, that you see on the street. So I would love to have that conversation. That's a really good idea. Well, thank you so much, Melissa. This has been wonderful. And if anybody has any or further questions that they'd like to ask, please pop them in the comment section below the video. Um, I'd love to reply to any comments and questions that come up there. And thanks very much, Melissa. I look forward to yeah. hopefully talking again soon. Thank <laughs> they could also okay. Follow um, Instagram, Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. It's Melissa Hadley Barrett. Um, is I do have a restorative sexual health one, but that is men and women. But just men's health is on Melissa Hadley Barrett, and I'm always putting on little reels and videos and educational stuff. Well. Oh, I love that. That's perfect. Great. And again, well, everything's going to be in the description box below. And you tell me even more, Melissa. But I know you've got a lot of wonderful work <laughs> scattered around. Thanks okay. very much. Thanks, Victoria.